The way that music is used in part two is a huge departure from the way it was used in part one. And while we do have El Maestro Gustavo Santalayo once again writing most of the music, his contributions are much more restrained and subtle when compared to the powerful themes and melodies he gave us in part one. The directorial choice for a much less musically present game could not be more apparent than when we are booting up part two for the first time. Now, let's contrast this with how part one begins. No matter where you are in part one story, every time you boot up the game, the music of the main menu and load screen continuously reinforce the haunting and beautiful mood of the world. The powerful melodies of part one, not just on the title screen, but throughout the first game, work well to tell any possible story set in the brutal and beautiful world of The Last of Us. Whereas part one uses mournful melodies to tell its bittersweet story, part two opts for subtlety and silence, which were, in my view, miscalculated calculations when it comes to best serving part two's haunting and brutal theme. Silence has to be bookended or preceded by sound to be used effectively, so here it fails to kindle a mood within me when loading into my game. Despite the gravity of the boat's meaning at the end of the game, I found it to be a poor choice here on the main menu for communicating a mood and feeling that can composite the entire experience of Part 2. With all that said, I did enjoy all of the music of Part 2, especially McQuail's dark tonal pieces. I just think that the way music was used in Part 1 creates a greater emotional connection to the narrative. Additionally, given the poetic meaning of the guitar at the beginning and end of Ellie's revenge story, I'm very surprised that her signature moth-fretted six-string wasn't used in the game's main title, along with appropriate haunting music. Talking away I don't know what I'm to say, I'll say. 